Hello, it's Stuart, the Unrepentant Atheist, and we're back again with another video. This one, I'm not sure, from about um, 2018, possibly 2019. So it's uh, Steve calling in from the UK. Another, another very dumb call from a British caller. He's calling in, questioning whether Matt was really a real Christian. It's really quite a bizarre call, and um, it's certainly worth listening to. Not the whole thing, so I've skipped the first few minutes to get to the real action. Let's go. Convinced you were going on to great things, essentially for great things for Christ. What happened? And I explained this as, as well. Um, I don't think I was a true Christian in the sense that uh, I knew God, because I don't think anybody has that. But if at the time, <laughs> if, if <laughs> what, what's funny? Um, well, well, because Matt, you see, um, I have to then sort of come back at you and say, in watching your videos. It is apparent that you've not had, um, well, it, it comes over that you've not had an experience with a being outside of space and time. I, I agree with you. I have not actually, I, and I see no evidence <laughs> yeah. that anybody else has either. Okay, okay. Well, then, well then you see, biblically speaking, uh, Jesus, all he did with children was have him on his knee. And I know you know your Bible. In Acts, it says we have to repent, believe, and be baptized. I, I repented, I believed, and I was baptized. Yeah, 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 yeah. But if Excuse me, if I could just interrupt. We see this happening with many, many different ideologies. Um, I, I've, I've seen it happening with even veganism, that people make videos saying that they're no longer vegans. And then you see thousands and thousands of messages from vegans saying, you weren't a true vegan. <laughs> you didn't follow the correct protocols, etc., etc. Five-year-old doesn't need to repent because you have to be sentient. You have to be. Five-year-olds aren't sentient. Huh? Five-year-olds aren't sentient. Well, five, he rededicated five himself olds. many times. So hang, hang on, yeah, but let's not talk about five-year-olds. I mean, the thing the thing that you're skipping over, Steve. The thing that you're skipping over, Steve, is that. I didn't say that I got saved at five. I said I did these things that would normally be yeah. getting saved at five, yeah. but that as a teenager, I recognized that I couldn't have understood this at five, and so I did it yeah. again. Okay, so so you see, cause, because when you say that you don't believe God exists, you see, my life has changed dramatically. So what? Counter having been a heathen um, out there, so what? taking loads of drugs, getting involved in all sorts of hoodlum activities. Steve? Um, um, to a point where I couldn't look at myself in the mirror. What does it, I just hate myself? There's nothing about there's nothing about what you're saying that provides any evidence of an encounter with a being outside of space no, and time. No, because no, no, because it's a personal thing, and so that's why I wanted. Fine. To, because you could argue, you could probably argue me into the ground with your but it, logic, Steve. Way that you put arguments together, but it's a it, it's a personal thing, isn't it? It's okay. Then why are you calling? Personal. Then why are you calling? You have a personal experience that I don't have. Are you just calling in to to say that I never had that personal experience? Be I just wanted to ask. Are you, you Steve? Steve, I'm. Are you calling? Yeah to basically say that I haven't had the personal experience you've had, because no, that, no, that to me no. would seem to be self-evident. Yes, and so, and so, and so therefore, if you, if you haven't had the personal experience, it's very difficult for you, because I mean, like I'm sure, you, you said just now that you got married, Owen Ra officiated your wedding, you love your wife. How do you know? Um, I'm sure you've spoken about her publicly and said she's beautiful, you love her, you can't wait to see her, but none... Okay, I think this is descending into drivel. Do you agree with me that it's drivel? He's he's getting away from the point. I'm going to I'm going to skip forward in the video to see if there's anything else worth listening to. Okay, so he's now moved on to saying that, uh, for example, with Matt's marriage, that at his wedding he would have said he loves his wife, she's beautiful, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, and that he's never he this caller has never heard. And Matt say anything like that about Jesus, uh, which is bizarre because I expect the only time that the caller has ever seen Matt is when he's been on the atheist experience. So let's just pick it up there. You can't wait to see her, but none of you haven't said anything like that about our risen saviour, which tells me that you haven't encountered him, and so therefore... Steve! 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 <laughs> Steve, Steve! Please don't be monumentally <laughs> stupid! You're listening to an atheist who does not believe that there is a God. Yeah. If you were listening yeah. to me, Steve, if you were listening yeah. to me, 
25 years ago, I would have told you the things that you say I'm not telling you. How stupid do you have to be to think a former Christian current atheist is going to get on a TV show to talk about how much he loves Jesus? <laughs> But, uh, yeah, but, but, but Matt, you know what I'm saying? No, uh, I don't know what you're saying, Steve, because it's, it's Steve, Steve, pause, changed. pause. If you'd have talked to me 30 years ago, do you think I'd have told you how much I love Jesus? Um, well, I would have I would have still wanted to question the church that put you, the, the, because, because I know that the Southern Baptist Church is, has a history of... Well, we've heard this as well. You're in the wrong church. You're reading the wrong version of the Bible, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Being works driven, and so no, it actually doesn't. The Southern Baptist Church is, is one of the most anti-works driven churches you're going to find. You don't even know what the hell you're talking about. And meanwhile, I'm telling you that members of that church have come forward to vouch for what I believed at the time. And all I'm asking you is, if you had talked to me 30 years ago, if I, I'm asking you. I'm, tr I'm getting you to try to get you to be honest, Steve, because your arguments are not honest. You are calling to say, you don't hear me talking about how much I love the risen Savior. That's because I don't believe that anymore. But if you'd no, talked to me, if you would have talked to me 30 years ago, don't you think you'd have heard that? Yeah, yeah. And so, and so, all I'm do you think you would have heard that? Uh, well, I would have thought that in your testimony, it would have been like, wow. I'm not. Well, Matt has already said that when he debated Mike Lacona on the resurrection that there were members of his former church there who said that they understood at the time that when Matt was a believer he was so full of Jesus etc they thought he was going places so it's evident to me from that kind of lim limited anecdotal evidence that um, it seems that you know Matt was actually somebody who that if you'd spoken to him in those days you you possibly would have been convinced that he was a full-on uh, evangelical Christian. So this guy really doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm encounter God. incredible, turned my life upside down, but now I've turned my back on him. Yeah, so stop so, judging me by your ignorant presuppositions. No, I'm not judging you. I'm you just are. having a conversation. You are. Uh, well, um, did yeah, you not, you did you me? not, did you not declare that I've never had an experience with a supernatural being, and did you not point out that I am not sitting here telling about talking about how much I love Jesus? Oh, Matt, I mean, I know you're not now because that's the whole point, point of your show. You, you, you said you don't believe that he exists, right? He, and he didn't exist. Well, yeah, I'm not. Can, I don't know whether or not he actually existed in the past, but I certainly don't think he exists yeah. now, and I certainly don't see any reason oh, to think he was just, divine just one more or that question, anything. And I'll let you guys go on, I'm, what? Uh, uh, just, if I could just ask one more question, and I'll let you guys get on. Um, you, um, you spoke just now about how there's been all sorts of end times, etc., etc., etc. Are you finding it interesting with all this cryptocurrency that's coming in now, and how the loss of folding money, the loss of fiat money, it's all going to be digital money, and the system that's going to, to run it is going to be a world interconnected system. Do I where, find that interesting? Where, yes. Do I yeah, find it yeah. relevant to biblical prophecies or end times? No. Well, then Revelation 13, verses 15 to 16, says that man shall neither buy nor sell, lest he receive a mark on the right hand or the forehead. And all I'm aware of what it says. And, and you know what? Yeah, it, Even if it comes to be the case that we all have a chip yeah. in our right hand, that doesn't mean a Bible prophecy has come true. Any more than when I say, I'd like my steak medium rare, if it shows up medium rare, that's not a prophecy that requires some kind of supernatural intervention. This is people doing stuff. Okay. Well, I just find it interesting that, like, with our loss of freedoms that are going to come when we lose folding money, it's going to it's going to completely alter all of human freedom as we know it. And uh, okay. um, I think people should be aware that that's that this is that this is imminent. And, and I have no idea what any of that has to do with whether or not there's a God. So I mean, you've quite, you've like completely jumped the rails now to talk about something. Oh no, it was just a second question. I was just asking for your interest. So anyway, so thank you for your time. Sure. Um, um, I, I uh, appreciate the taking my call, and uh, thanks a lot. Okay. Okay, so that's it. Um, Steve called in with a really strange sort of call. He went from Matt not being a true Christian. Matt's never had a relationship with the living Jesus. He's never had a relationship with a being outside of space and time. And then he uh, retreated very quickly and went straight over to uh, cryptocurrencies and um, 
prophecies from uh, Revelation, he started leaning towards conspiracy uh, theory thinking. So I thought you might find that interesting, but mainly because of this thing that, you know, the way he laughed, that Matt was never, never had this relationship with the living Jesus. And um, yeah, well, I'm quite sure that had, had I met Matt 25, 30 years ago, he would have been, he would have been full of Jesus, just like a lot of these other callers saying, you know, man, my life has been so crazy happy since I gave my life to Jesus, you know, all that kind of nonsense. So yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure that Matt was like that in those days. And he obviously came out of it. Uh, it must have been, a, it must have been, a, as he said, it was a process of research and gradual realization. So why others have not come out of it like Steve? I can't answer that question. Maybe, you know, uh, I mean, either they've not done the research or maybe they had such just a big mind blowing experience that they've decided that whatever atheists say and whatever arguments are put to them and however, however little evidence there is, that experience for them was so powerful that they've decided to attribute it to God. They can't uh, rationalize it any other way. I don't, I, I don't know. It's one of those, it's one of those mysteries and a lot of Christians can't understand why atheists reject Jesus. That's just the nature of uh, that's just the nature of human beings. We've all got different opinions, and I happen to be in the camp as an atheist that think obviously thinks that um, I'm right and that I've got a sound epistemology and standards for evidence. And theists obviously uh, disagree with my position, so I don't know what to do other than just keep arguing my case. That's all for now. I'll be back again with another video very soon. Thanks for your support.